Hello internet. Someone's come to say hello. Hey guys, sorry I haven't seen you in a while, but you okay? Are you okay down there? Hello, busy kid. Hello, baby. Stop rubbing against my tripod. That's how you broke the lens last time. Hey guys, so I know I haven't seen you in a while, but I didn't know what to do a video about. I have some great creative ideas, but they haven't really come to fruition just yet. So I thought today I'll do a really quick video. And then, because I like doing the talky ones, and I think you guys hopefully like the talky ones as well. So I decided to talk to you guys about 10 things that I think are underrated. Now that's obviously just my opinion. You guys might have loads of ideas and go, ah, what about blah blah. So these are just 10 things that I think are underrated, or at least have become underrated in recent years, and I thought I'd talk to you about those today. Number 10 is the YouTube song by Dodie Clark. Now I know that Dodie's channel isn't really underrated anymore, although she's not as popular as some people, but she's definitely come a long way. She's got her silver plaque, and generally, although she was seen as underrated, now she's got a lot more success. However, the YouTube song is a very old song of hers that's just on her channel. She hasn't, as far as I know, recorded it or anything, and she doesn't really perform it that much, but it's really good. It's like a sort of YouTube fandom anthem, which is amazing, and it's the sort of thing that us guys, as in internet people, would really take on board. And it's the sort of thing that could be ours, and could be seen as relatable and almost be a meme or whatever. It's such a relatable song, it's such a real song and I love it. And it's just a shame that it's like a really old song that doesn't really get played much anymore. When I was at Summer in the City last year, we had to line up in this big hall after we got our tickets and wait for the place to open. <laughs> That's my we all sat on the floor and there were people vlogging and waiting and having a catch up with their internet friends and stuff and it was fun and then they opened the door and let us in and it was like a crowd Amy, you're gonna die. I am and we were walking and vlogging of course and I started singing the YouTube song and other people were joining in and I thought this is really good this is a song for us this is the anthem of our generation we are the YouTube army <laughs> But most of the time people don't really know the song and it's not really given the credit that I believe it deserves. So that's why I think the YouTube song is underrated. Number nine is going it alone. And when I say going it alone, I mean going to concerts, events, conventions, etc. I see a lot of people might want to go to a certain thing but they don't have a friend to go with. And to be honest, I don't have any friends. And I go to lots of events anyway, and I find that's the best thing to do because if you don't have a friend to go with and you go alone, you end up making loads of friends. And then you might even have a new group of friends, and it's really good. And I saw someone tweeting recently that they wanted to go to a gig, but they didn't have a friend to go with. And I said, listen, that's how I made one of my best friends. I met one of my best friends at an Emily Awesome concert, and I've met other friends that way as well. So it's definitely something that's worth doing. If you don't have a friend to go to a thing with, sometimes going alone is better than not going at all. It might even be better than going with friends because you might end up talking to people and making more friends. If you can't do that for anxiety reasons or social anxiety or whatever, that's fine. But I find it a great thing to do. I even used to go to raves alone and come back with like 15 friends, <laughs> Facebook friends and such. So yeah, if it's something that is accessible to you and you can do, or if there's a reason that your friends can't go to something with you, going alone is great. Don't have doubts about it and think, oh no, but I'll be alone and people will think, oh, you've got no friends, or I'll be a loser. Just do it. Just do what you want in life and don't worry about what other people are doing. This camera is not straight. This next one is an album, and it's an album that was very successful back in the 90s and was pretty groundbreaking back then, but people don't really talk about it anymore. And that is Discovery by Daft Punk. Do you like that one? No, you do like that one. Oh, he likes it. Um, <laughs> so I found that in recent years, people want to listen to songs 
buy them like Get Lucky and Lose Yourself to Dance and all those funky ones but honestly Discovery was such a huge thing and I know that there's probably loads of young people who don't know about it it was a huge album of the 90s it was really dancey, really fun and it came accompanied with its own movie because each music video that they did was an anime which put together made a full length anime movie so it's kind of like the Fallout Boy Young Blood series if you want to call it that but um, more like a whole movie that you could buy on DVD that was also available as separate music videos it was really good the songs, the animation, everything was amazing I was in a club recently and I thought it's great that they're playing Get Lucky but they never play old Daft Punk and then a few minutes later this happened And it was amazing and everyone just lost their shit so that was a really good experience and I hope that the old songs get more recognition nowadays because they're great. Number seven on my list is the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman which was a series of fantasy books which were completely epic, amazing, they were set in a, set in a parallel universe to us and they, they'll meet me in the village, I have a social life. The trilogy is made up of Northern Lights, The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass and it follows a girl called Lyra and her friend Will through this amazing adventure they have which has to do with magic dust disappearing and demons and it's just incredible. They did make a movie version which was like an alternate version of the first one, it wasn't quite the same as the book and then they never made any more. But the film was fine, it just didn't have any sequels so it just stopped in the middle of a story but the books are amazing so if you read the books you will probably cry but you will love them number six on my list is Tattoo who were one of my favourite bands for a long time starting from 2001 through to 2011 is when they split up they had a long really good career and did really good creative things but unfortunately they're only really known for their first album with songs like All of the Things She Said and All About Us being their most successful hits. A lot of people in this end of Europe, in Britain, don't really know about their subsequent albums and all the things they did. The band consisted of Lena and Yulia, who were two Russian teenage girls who were plucked from a children's band and put together as a new act. It was originally meant to be just Lena, she did an anti-war song which flopped and then their producer who was all about and their producer who was all about scandals and controversy and getting attention and getting loads of money he decided that if anti-war songs don't sell maybe songs about same-sex love do so he put them together as a faux lesbian act in order to gain success controversy scandal etc now this was 2001 so things like this were still seen as controversial and they did gain lots of fame from doing this and were fortunately able to break free of that and tell everyone that it wasn't true and then go their own way for a while. Now although it's not good to pretend to be gay for record sales, a lot of their fans were from Russia and Russia is somewhere where being gay is seen as completely abhorrent and young gay people are not given any freedom of expression, are not given any right and are told that they're going to hell. So although it wasn't good for him to use them to make money that way, a lot of people took solace in their music and their lyrics and their videos and a lot of people were helped by them. They have obviously been criticised as a band who were not just a commercial pop group but a commercial pop group who had a manager who was trying to get them popular through scandals and through controversy but although that has been said they are talented girls and their lyrics and music and videos were always really interesting at least in my opinion there was once a point where they almost got back together 
and yet it all went tits up with arguments and drama and not being friends anymore. So, sadly, they're not going to uh, be making a comeback anytime soon. But their older music is really good, and if you check out their solo careers, you might like the music that they've done as well. They're still one of my favourite bands, and I really think that you should check them out. Number five on the list is Porcelain Black. Porcelain Black is an artist who was originally called Porcelain and the Tramps. The reason she changed that is because it sounds like a band, and everyone thought that she was a they, and that it was a band, so she changed it to Porcelain Black. Porcelain and the Tramps was really big on MySpace back in the day, and did music that was along the lines of metal, industrial, blah blah blah, as a one-woman band. She often had guest guitarists and stuff like that, but she did a lot of the production side of it herself, and it was quite heavy, but lots of fun. She then when changing her name, sort of became more of a manufactured pop star. Although it was still raspy and screamy and a bit rocky, it was a lot more pop, which is fine. She was signed to Red One and she made some pop music for him. And that's where everything seemed to go very downhill. When she was under the guise Porcelain and the Tramps, so back in the day, in like 2007, we were waiting for an album. We wanted an album. She had songs on MySpace and YouTube, but it's not the same as an album. And we waited, and we waited for years. And she nearly got one with a record producer or whatever, and she then didn't because they were trying to make her go down a route that she didn't want to go down. So that was all called off. There was no Porcelain and the Tramps album. She then got signed to Red One and was making music under him, and he was meant to give her an album. And we're still waiting. We've been waiting a very long time. There's no Porcelain Black album. She's released songs. She's made songs and then sold them to other people and stuff like that because sometimes that's what you have to do when your record label is shit. But unfortunately, there has been no album. So unfortunately, Porcelain Black, although her Instagram is pretty interesting, is not really doing anything at the moment and has been left on the back burner. That unfortunately happens with producers sometimes and sometimes they're shit and don't let a person release music, and that's horrible. But if you check out, just go to YouTube and type in Porcelain and the Tramps, or Porcelain Black. Her music's lots of fun, um, whichever name she's using. She's still pretty good, and I really like her. So hopefully her situation gets sorted out soon. Number four on the list is Pussy Riot. Pussy Riot completely took over the world in 2012, when they hit the news headlines for their punk protest against Putin. Yes, alliteration for their punk protest against Putin. Pussy Riot are a Russian protest group and they were arrested for bringing their brand of punk into a church to protest against Putin and all the corrupt things the church was doing to support him. The church was very hand in hand with the Russian government at the time and there was a lot of corruption going on. And they went in there with their brand of punk, which involves colorful balaclavas, colourful dresses and kicking ass, and they were arrested for hooliganism and put on trial to be sent to Gulag. <sighs> Pussy Riot are a bunch of feminists who fight for things like gay rights, women's rights, etc. in Russia, and the reasons they gave for arresting them were things like that their performance was very sexual because they had their arms showing, and all these ridiculous things that was just the Russian authorities not wanting people to fight the system. Pussy Riot had the support of social media as a whole. It seemed that they were trending for so long and people all over Facebook and Twitter were supporting them. Artists such as Peaches, Madonna, Sting, Green Day I think, etc. were supporting them and Peaches even wrote a song in support of them called Free Pussy Riot. Pussy Riot songs and music videos have always been this way. They have lyrics against the government and they dress in that way and they do things like abseil down the side of a building and set a Putin flag on fire and they're completely rock and roll, they're completely brilliant, they've since been freed, luckily and they've done campaigns to improve prison conditions they're brilliant, you should definitely check them out I know that it's only recent that this was a huge news story and hugely all over social media but I know that a lot of people are very young, they may have forgotten about it, they may have been little when it happened or maybe, I don't know, other stuff happened in 2012 that was interesting, the fandom, and other drama happened and maybe they didn't really pay attention to it. But honestly, they were brilliant. I've watched documentaries about them, I've made edits about them. 
that you can watch here, giving myself extra work, definitely check them out. Number three on the list is Curly. Curly is a singer from Estonia who came out in 2008 with her song Walking On Air. She was always very creative, very alternative. Her first album was quite alternative and rocky, slash pop. And then her second album went completely the other way. She went very into dance. She did stuff with DJs and she's even produced her own songs. She's amazing. She was in a situation like Porcelain Black where she was on a record label and wasn't able to release any music to the extent that she wrote and recorded so many songs that have either not been released and had to be leaked or have been sold to other people. But she's recently had her newfound freedom and become an independent artist. She has her own record label and she's released a song called Feral Hearts and another one called Blossom. She does everything from sometimes the singing, the producing, the writing, down to what the sets look like, what the green screens are doing, and she's made what's on her feet. Incredibly creative, incredibly talented, and a really awesome person. She's done great things like write best-selling pop songs and write music for Tim Burton soundtracks, and yet she's still largely unknown. So please listen to her because she's amazing. Number two is someone I've already mentioned, whose name is Emily Autumn. She is an incredible singer, songwriter, musician, etc. She's kind of similar to Curly in that she's very creative, but she's also classically trained. So she plays loads of classical instruments, she writes her own songs, she's written a book, and she's just hypnotic. The way she dresses and styles herself and stuff is very unique, and she is just brilliant. She is obsessed with the Victorian era and a sort of old, new, I guess slightly steampunky style, so she sets a lot of her songs and stories in that era. And a lot of what she does is on the mental health theme, because she's suffered with mental health problems herself, so she deals with those kind of problems and the problems that people with mental health issues in society face, whether it's how people are treated these days or in the Victorian era. It's actually very uplifting, and I know a lot of people with mental health issues find her music very uplifting and see her as a role model. And now for the number one, on my list of most underrated things is kindness. Yes, this video has a cheesy moral message. Kindness, I think, is very underrated. I think people put kindness below things like being really honest or being really cool or being really successful or whatever. And being honest and things like that are fine, but you can also be kind and I think a big issue at the moment is people being kind to themselves. I'm going to do a video about this soon that's a bit more in depth so I'm not going to go into much depth now, but I was with a child the other day, as I sometimes am, and I'm not going to go into what happened because I'm not, but I said to the child, please be kind to yourself, and my friend who was with me was a bit like, be kind to yourself, as if it was like a really weird thing to say or to expect someone to do and sort of snorted at it and I just thought oh yeah in yoga being kind to yourself is a major thing it's called mindfulness it's basically being kind to yourself and if you're someone who does or teaches yoga being kind to yourself is obviously a thing that people should do and a thing that people talk about but I guess in the rest of the world people don't really talk about it that much and it's very underrated to be a, to be kind to others, and B, to be kind to yourself. People are a bit like, ooh, be kind to yourself. But of course you should be kind to yourself. There are many people who are unkind in life, and I think if you're kind to yourself, that's a start. Even if other people are unkind to you, you need to be kind to yourself and to others. I always support Dan and Phil's Nicer Internet campaign, which people don't really talk about much anymore, but I think the conversation still needs to happen about online behaviour, cyberbullying, etc. Obviously there's a lot more unkindness on the internet because there will be people who won't say a certain thing to your face but they'll say it through a computer screen and there are people who are unkind to each other behind their back as well. Kindness is a huge deal and it's often overlooked which is why I think Hufflepuffs are very overlooked as well. That's just a personal thing. Please try and be kind in all you do, even though it's hard and people are frustrated sometimes. Please try and be kind to yourself. That's often the hardest thing to do. If you want to check out any of the artists, bands, albums, etc. that I've 
mentioned, please do. Let me know what things and people you think are underrated and I'll be down in the comments and let you know what I think. And have a lovely weekend. Love you guys. Bye!